Good evening. Went to Harbor Freight and bought this miter box with saw. And there is nothing special about this. This is a very common item. It's a very common item. A lot of people complain about this, but it's really not meant to do very much. I do like that they protect the edge of the saw. Well, they protect your hand from the edge of the saw. So we're gonna try it, although this isn't the reason I bought it. For someone that has a motorized miter box, this isn't very good. Uh, why would you use this when you can use that? Although this might be a more accurate, I don't know. I don't like that it has these uh, scratches on the back of it, but I reckon those will buff out if I use it. Get a lot of complaints from people that say that it scrapes the edge of this and cuts itself up. Well, that is the nature of this to some degree. So let's give it a shot. Okay, it's a pretty good cut. We'll measure it in just a second. I'm more interested in if it damaged the slot. And I can find no damage to the slot. Uh, there might be a little bit of a greasing in there. I'm sure over time that will happen. You saw how I used that. That's not really how you're supposed to use it. You should be hooking it over the edge. Although it works, the proper way is to get it on the edge of something, tie it down. But if I can hold it and nothing moves, to me that's the same. So let's get a 45, let's do a 90. Ah, obviously there was some edge, edge damage to the miter box if I've got a little piece of yellow on the saw. Now this was uh, $5.99. That's incredibly cheap and disposable. So if it does cut it up, when it get, ceases to be accurate, there is some play in that. So well, there we go. It leaves it a little, uh, would be nice if that was a little smoother. You'd have to go uh, smooth those out and it's a little tear out. It's gonna be very hard to measure if it's 90 degrees using just a small length of wood like this. But let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's pretty good. There might be a small amount of variation in that. Okay, the side that was up measures very, very, very close. There might be a little variation across the length of that. Uh, but the side that's down, because of the tear out, looks like it might be off a little. It's not 90 degrees perfect or it wouldn't move like that. Looks like the tip is a little bit too far in from what this gauge is telling me. See, I wouldn't expect that to move like that. To me, there's a tiny bit of play up in there. Let's see with this one. This one feels dead accurate. But with the play in this box, I wouldn't expect to be a very precise cut. These are like rough cuts. Look at the play in that. Just if I didn't hold that exactly perfect, if I could always hold it against one side, then the error would average out. But especially with me holding it like I am, allows a little more variation. Um, let's cut another one and put them together and see how they do. I realize I've got a very small board here, but it is, you can still use it to check. Okay, when I cut that one, I tried to hold the saw against one side of that to make it a little easier. So that splintering underneath, that's because I don't have a backer on it. This actually has grooves for the saw to go down in. And because of that, I've got to put something on the back of it to keep that splintering from happening. Casual fit, which means I'm not putting a lot of pressure in any direction. But you can see that that is not precisely 45. Let's turn this over. Try the other side. Now, it looks like it's not off as much, but it still looks like it's off. Now, this way seems to be a little tighter, but if you're going for picture frames, you ain't never gonna be happy with this. If you're going for trimming your house, 
This might be close enough. You have to decide that for yourself. But I don't blame the tool for being inaccurate because that's the way it's designed. It's designed and it's got all of this movement. Anything that has that much movement, never going to be accurate. So let's try this. You see what I'm saying? You should never expect a really precise cut in something that moves like that. Okay, so if you're making picture frames, don't use this. If you're doing trim, it might work for you. Depends on if you're painting the trim or not. If you're painting it, the paint will feel that. That's just not 45 exactly. It takes a degree or so off. But once again, if that saw moving like that, it's not going to be perfect. I've used these saws like this in the past to cut trim, and they've done okay if you're going to paint it. If you're making a picture frame, it ain't even going to be close. Never going to be happy with it. But I didn't buy this for the saw. didn't buy it for the miter box. I bought this for the saw. I'm going to take the back brace off, and I'm going to cut it into two different pieces, probably right about here for a long and a short cabinet scraper. So I'll post a review of this and then I'll post a follow-up at some point later of how I made this into cabinet scrapers. And that is a pretty nasty blade. I don't know why they put that protector on it. It'd be very easy to butcher your hand on that. Okay, so there's a review of the miter box and the saw. The saw I think a lot more of than the miter box. And that saw is reasonably flat. Might be a little bit of a warp right here at the handle. I'll follow up with this after I get the cabinet scrapers made. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.